You were about to enter Chuck versus the podcast, the place for people who love Chuck and the people who work on Chuck. The only show that takes you behind the scenes with the stars. Yvonne Strahovski. Zachary Levi. Joshua Gomez. Ryan McPartland. Adam Balba. Sarah Lancaster. Interactive interviews. Julia Wing. Phil Clemmer. All the cast. Dixon High. Tony Hale. Scott Krinsky. Marcus for Lawrence. Anita Figueresi. Fun hosts. This is Mel. This is Liz. Now you can see how wacko we are. The writers. Ali Adler. Scott Rosenbaum. Zev Barrow. The editors. Matt Barber. Jeff Granville. Kevin Mock. Contests. We are giving away a Chuck press kit. The directors. Jason Enzo. Norman Buckley. The guest stars. Steve Austin. Kristen Griff. The music. This is Tim Jones. Guest hosts. I'm Kaylee from Toronto. Conventions. Lights come up and here comes Jester out on stage. Set visits. This is the guy right here. And much more. Are you ready? This is Gray. This is Mel. This is Liz. And we want to welcome you to Chuck vs. the Podcast, episode 80 for Thursday, February 10th, 2011. And boy, we had a fun episode of Chuck this week. We'll talk about it in a second, but first, the news. The ratings for this week's episode of Chuck, unfortunately, not so much news. Um, 1.7 in the 18 to 49 demo. Um, however, you know, Everything's relative. Um, the news didn't fare well for anything else. Harry's Law dropped to 1.7, and The Cape is on its way out with 1.3, which is that that's death terms. Mm. That kind of that's too bad. But that's what Chase was pulling, and NBC just put it on hiatus, which is basically see ya. Yeah. I'm sad. No more James Frain. Ah, <laughs> uh, he'll bounce back. That guy, he's in everything. Yeah, and and I mean, well, we we say it a lot, but uh, I mean, DVR numbers. I, I was just looking at some some DVR numbers, Live Plus Seven, um, and it's amazing how much shows can bounce back when you factor all that. Yeah, and there are a lot of people that are quick to point out that oh, the Live Plus Seven don't matter; they don't matter. It's just bragging rights. Except in the case of NBC, um, we had a. a a few weeks last fall when NBC gave press access to their internal ratings system mm -hmm. called Tammy. Uh, we mentioned that on a podcast a while ago. And it shows that they basically they have a pyramid and they've got broadcasting at the bottom. It's the, the largest weight of um, numbers that they look at. But then they also have um, online viewing. They've got DVR and they've got video on demand all counted. Mm-hmm. So NBC actually does look at that. They're trying to take into account all of the alternative viewing methods. Yeah. And everything is relative. If the cape dies, uh, yeah, and Chuck is right next to the cape, Chuck looks better in re in mm. relative terms. Yep. Boy, Mondays are true. rough for NBC. Yeah. They can't seem to catch a break. Yeah. And, I mean, if they had something super promising to put next to it, maybe, but I don't know. Chuck is uh, is anchoring that slot in, as far as NBC is concerned. Yeah. Well, we do have reason to celebrate at the end of this month. Zachary Levi will be on stage at the Oscars. He is confirmed as a performer on the February 27th telecast. He'll be singing I See the Light from Tangled, which is nominated for an Oscar, alongside his co-star Mandy Moore. And Alan Minken will be accompanying them. That would be really, really cool. Very cool. Zachary Levi at the Oscars. Yay! I'm still not going to watch. No? Ah, oh, man. I, I just can't. I can't bring myself to watch that stuff. Uh-huh. You know, I... I, I want this part. I'm sorry, but, like, you know, when I see these people get up on stage and they're like, Oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. Like, they didn't know. Well, sometimes they don't. <laughs> I mean, Halle Berry, I think that was genuine. They knew. Mm -hmm. but that was also what ten years ago. I mean, I, I, all right, all right. I I get it. The adrenaline rush, and you know, you're finally able to let it out. Maybe that's mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah. I. And nobody that I like ever wins anyway. And all the, the you know movies that win, I kind of go, what? Er. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. So. Yeah. 
even though I did, I did see the um, King's Speech this last oh, week, and that is, is a great like, movie. It's still not here. Stupid it's Podunk, Kansas. Really? No, no. We have one movie theater. You're kidding. No, and it stinks, literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. I can't. Just can't. I mean, my little, well, not little, but my thirty-two inch TV. It's not even a flat screen. Uh huh. It's better than our movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wait for it to come out on DVD, or you know, if I'm out, out of town, I'll go watch something. It's wow. better. But now ours is awful. Mm. Sorry. Yeah, and they don't get the little movies, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, ah, get ready to put your what? <laughs> Funny trails. <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. And, and we're back. <laughs> well, are you ready to put your mouse to work again? Well, we are. TVinsider.com, the subsidiary of TV Guide magazine, is running their fan favorite polls right now. And Chuck is represented in multiple categories, including favorite actor, favorite actress, favorite couples who have, and favorite villain. So voting ends February 15th, so get on over there. Mm-hmm. And we've been getting a lot of queries about when Chuck Season 4 will resume in the UK. Um, unfortunately, we don't have an answer to that. From what UK Chucksters have told us, um, the channel that was carrying Chuck, Living Network, was recently sold to Sky, who appear to be taking a while to settle their programming plans. Um, we'll let you know as soon as a return date is confirmed, but in the meantime, you can purchase episodes from iTunes UK the day after they air in North America. I don't know if they have season passes there, but that might be a good investment if, if they do. Mm-hmm. And breaking news this week is that Chuck is back on iTunes US and iTunes Canada. Um, people have been asking and asking and asking, and Josh Schwartz finally uh, broke the, the great news that it is back, and we're just assuming that Zoom Marketplace and other, other places that it might have been missing uh, that it's going to be back there very, very quickly if it isn't already by the time this podcast comes out. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful news. Chuck is spreading again in the digital realm. So it seems like our news has not been that great news <laughs> this <laughs> week. Fortunately. But the good news is that we have a really, really fun episode of Chuck to discuss. Uh, I mean, to me, this was probably... Um, I'm trying to think. It was probably the most fun episode since Honeymooners. Um, Chuck versus the Seduction Impossible with Roan. What did you guys think? I laughed so hard. Uh-huh. Like, almost from from the moment Clara opens her eyes and everybody's hovering over her until, <laughs> you know, the, the end there where when Casey is, you know, watching Kathleen and then it gets a little poignant. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So lighthearted and fun. Yeah. Even the songs that were picked for this episode were just, well, they were perfect, but just hilarious. It just added to the humor. Mm-hmm. 16 tons for Roan. Right. <laughs> working bars. at the Buy More. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is that where Beckman dumps you now if you make him mad? <laughs> you can't be working at Buy More. Somebody positive that that is what the Gretas were all about. Uh-huh. The Gretas were being punished, and that's why he kept getting a new one. <laughs> oh, that could be. Yeah, it could be. Well, they, I mean, there was there was so much fun in this episode, and uh, as much as we knew what was coming, there was still a lot more to, um, to see. I mean, everything from that beginning scene with Clara and just the looks on their faces. <laughs> I mean, you could see Sarah and Casey in particular were like they would prefer any mission in the entire world over yes. <laughs> over this. Yeah. I was really tickled to see that Casey was as panicked as Sarah. Yeah, for the, the wedding talk <laughs> that was funny. Well, and so was Chuck. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, he was. He was getting panicked. I think maybe because he could see how it was affecting Sarah mm-hmm. yeah, too. But yeah, that's overwhelming. But you know, I thought it was. It was really cute to go back for a minute to that scene where they're all hovering over Clara. You know, Sarah's front and center and oohing and on, and, you know, Casey's there. The, everybody's there mm-hmm. with this baby and just kind of reinforced the whole, yeah, we're all family thing that yeah. we got at first. 
Yeah. So I like that. I thought that was sweet. And and how much fun was it to see Mama B telling like spy stories to the baby <laughs> <laughs> with such a soothing voice? I know. And then the her prince ended up being Papa B. Yeah. So that means they apparently went on missions together, which I did not know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> yeah. But another surprise was the fact that she was telling Clara the Sleeping Beauty tale. And I am not kidding you. Literally, like, three hours earlier, I wrote a piece for NiceGirlsTV.com mm-hmm. on Chuck Bartowski as Sleeping Beauty. I'm, I'm sorry? As Chuck Bartowski as Sleeping Beauty. As oh, yeah? Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. Comparing the fairy tale to Chuck mm-hmm. and making him Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> wow. Well. And Sarah as the prince. Yeah, and I just posted it, and then I'm watching the episode. I'm like, Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Psychic. Which is funny. Very cool. I liked her, her, her take on how the princess was woke up with the, with that kiss. Mm-hmm. He had the, the, um, the, um, anecdote to the poison on his lips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was, I thought it was cute. I don't know. It was a tiny thing, but I thought it was cute. Yeah. And uh, and how about uh, Morgan? Um, Morgan was a a lot of fun in this episode, but it was it was so cool to um, to see more development in that in that relationship. And I I gotta confess, when when Casey was coming to see Kathleen, I was so hopeful that there was gonna be something there, and mm-hmm. I was I was pretty dashed when um, when he was dashed. <laughs> um. Well, you know, I I felt a little sorry for him but then the way that he reacted was he was happy for her and he felt good he was relieved to see that as alex said her mom is happy she's in a good place Mm -hmm. and so i thought it was the more selfless and mature reaction on his part yeah he's happy for her and not you know go storming in and say but i'm your ex-fiance yeah make some big scene about it to just let her go and let her be happy Mm. yeah well you know casey's not in a position to settle down so what was he going to go back to what would that have done you know he's he's a spy he's a soldier Mm. and and that's just that's who he is and i just don't think that as much as he enjoys um chuck's family and that whole thing i think it's nice he's still probably i don't know Maybe he looks at it from an outsider's point of view, even though he really isn't an outsider, but it's where he's comfortable. Yeah. And he's already got enough vulnerability with his daughter. I mean, yeah, for yeah. any spy, uh, it's especially of, of his level, um, to have somebody that can make him vulnerable is a big deal. Yeah. I hope we're going to see Kathleen again. I hope that wasn't just our little, this is the way she's, this is why she's not a part of the story mm-hmm. you know i hope we do get some interactions with her but i did like how they had casey handle that mm-hmm. seemed fitting and very poignant and sweet yeah mm-hmm. and how fun was it <laughs> to have the the no storyline <laughs> oh. oh. you, you got to build up to it with a little no <laughs> and then those situations where he he just said <laughs> And like, he's just telling her, no, woman. <laughs> she's just, oh. <laughs> the look on her face. I have the look on her face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, Chuck, you better sleep with the lights on tonight. <laughs> you know, when is he going to learn? When is he going to learn not to ever take advice from Morgan? Like that? <laughs> Come on. Every time he does, he gets in trouble with Sarah. Uh-huh. That's, That's a good point. Mind you, um, advice can backfire not just for Morgan. Um, the the whole thing where where Roan um, advises him to seduce Sarah, <laughs> and then she does it back to him, but even though he backfire. knows, even though he knows that's exactly what she's doing, <laughs> he's still just so. Um, well, but I guess funny. anybody would be. Yeah, I mean, even I, and I, you know, I love chucking a suit and trench coat and sunglasses. I was like, yeah, yeah, bring it. But yeah, even me, Sarah wins. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was hilarious. It was really good. So yeah. do you want to elope? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then as she's leaving, 
He's like, no, don't change. We're forever. <laughs> and then in the very next scene, she's wearing a turtleneck and her hair is pulled back. And uh-huh. <laughs> he's like, I'll show you. And then he calls her a ball and chain. Well, he doesn't really, but she's not really. Call me a ball and chain. <laughs> the, the banter in this, you know, it was kind of old school, like Hepburn and Tracy. And yeah. you know, some of those really excellent teams from, from the golden age of movies. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what it reminds me of the banter in this one, which is, is written by Kristen Newman and Chris Dudak, yeah. who need, need to team up on more stuff. Yeah. Let's do this often, guys. Yeah. I loved that Roan was in the background overlooking all of that, and he had his own bars to just throw in there. And, like, <laughs> enjoy the whole scene playing out in front of him. <laughs> yeah. He spent yeah. a lot of this episode tied up. Yeah, yeah. He did. <laughs> he sure did. He didn't seem to mind, really. Yeah. You know, I liked him a lot better in this episode than I did the first time we met Roan. Mm-hmm. I liked him a lot better. That was the John Larroquette that I liked mm-hmm. from, you know, my court. Yeah. Yeah. He's I mean, a little I, less cynical, I think. Yeah. And it, it may be because he saw that Chuck and Sarah were together. They were in love. They were committed to each other. So he didn't really, you know, it, it worked out for them. Bravo. Hmm. Now, why are you fighting? <laughs> Never go on a mission angry. Yeah. And and another thing that struck me funny about the 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 Chuck and Sarah argument with the wedding she wants to elope he wants a big wedding what a flip yeah (laughs) because really it's 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 really the day is all about the woman the bride it really is you know the guy my husband used to tell me just tell me you know when to show up and what time (laughs) where and when and you just do everything else (laughs) and that's pretty much generally am i right gray it's pretty much generally guys are like you know what you just take care of all the plans just tell me where and when. Yeah. And here's Chuck. He wants, you know, the cake, the car, the whole darn thing. <laughs> well, I yeah. thought they tied that up nicely at the end when they finally got to the root of what it was that was causing Sarah to reject the big wedding was, well, who would sit on my side of the church? Mm-hmm. You know, who would be there for me? I don't have anyone. And Chuck, you know, bless his heart, he suddenly realizes it's been all about getting his family and protecting his family, getting his mother back. And now it's Sarah's turn. It's Sarah's turn to reconnect, for better or for worse, looking at next week's promo. Well, yeah, and but, it looks like a, it, like they've really opened the door to um, looking into Sarah's past. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. Just like they did that with, with not, Chuck? Though. Like when, when Chuck said, no matter what, I'm going to find my dad. And then they took several episodes to, to dig into that part of his life. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope, yeah. yeah. I hope we get that for Sarah. But um, mm-hmm. but she was awfully reluctant. She was not, he was saying, you know, basically vowing to, to find her family and, you know, reconnect her the way that now that his family is all together and he's feeling confident and he wants the same for her. She mm-hmm. did not seem enthusiastic about that. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll find out why. Yeah. Yeah. Now, oh. how much fun was the General Beckman story oh by? <laughs> the the dirty blonde. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the, I mean the stuff the the wall in Germany um <laughs> the bazooka i'm sorry that like out of out of all of the um images from this season general beckman with a bazooka is going to stand in my my mind i thought she was going to fall over with that thing oh little (laughs) yeah i was really tickled that i was i was really tickled that she decided that she assigned them a personal mission Mm -hmm. you know she flat out said this is off the books yeah They'll yeah. get round, and Chuck's like, "What?" And Sarah and Casey are smirking. Well, there's a history, huh? Florida yeah. 2000, <laughs> Perlan 89. <laughs> yeah. 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 You kind of knew something was up when you first see her. She pops up on the screen, and she's got a drink in her hand. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, and actually, and actually, the um, it was really, really good writing. I thought with the the whole how integrated the villain was into this like love triangle with Rowan and and 
Um, and that whole that whole scene where he's talking to her on the phone, I thought was really really cleverly yeah. written. That was clever. Because I was thinking, is this his daughter? Who is he talking to? Mm-hmm. You know, it's more affectionate than I would have expected. But yeah, she was. Yeah, she was pretty great. Yeah, and she was. You know, running things. She got to stay in the van. <laughs> for a change and yeah. run things and and then we had Casey trapped in the wall. Yeah. Uh, the, the 127 hours uh, ready reference. to cut his arm off to get out of there because he's stuck. Yeah. yeah. 127 hours reference. Yeah. <laughs> That's the name of that movie. Yeah. 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 And then he saves the day with the gun through the holes after he'd almost been shot. Mm-hmm. That was that was pretty clever. I liked that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And and in the end, how Beckman is the one who basically turns Roan down. Mm-hmm. Or at least, well, not exactly turns him down, but this whole time he's been afraid of letting her down, and really she was thinking the same thing. Mm-hmm. That was pretty nice. Yeah, they come to a mutual understanding at the end there, which was which was nice. Mm-hmm. And it was it was so lovely to just see her let down her hair and be like we see Literally. her outside of that. I mean, it really, <laughs> the first three seasons of Chuck, she pretty much could have been in the same room most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was nice to see her so much out of that uh, that sitting at the desk. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed seeing her in this in this episode. Um I don't know, I kinda thought it was her episode. Mm-hmm. It felt like it. Which yeah. surprised me. It's not what I expected given the promos and the synopsis that was released, but it I think this was Beckman's episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Though I mean, a lot of characters got serviced. Uh, I mean Yeah, they did. We we had significant advancement in in Casey's relationship with, um, I mean, both his, his daughter and Morgan and, and Kathleen, we, we had all of this, uh, this wedding storyline with, uh, with Chuck and Sarah, um, mm-hmm. and obviously getting past some significant, um, issues there. And, uh, uh I mean, Roan had some great, great scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, and, and then Mama B and Ellie, which uh, actually, if anything, the one thing that I think so, some people were disappointed about, I know Lou mentioned it on his um, review, was uh, how quickly Ellie dismissed Mama B. What do you guys think about that? Dismissed her or... Well, in the sense her? that uh, she she it seemed like for the longest time that Ellie was really wanting to be involved, um, or wanting to have her involved and, and dreaming that that her mom could be part of her life again. And now that... Mama B is around and and taking care of the baby. It seemed like Ellie just pushed her away at the end. That's not how I took it. Did you? Live? No, I didn't see that at all. Mm-hmm. Not at all. No, to me it was Ellie recognizing that Mary is not a person who can retire, or she's not ready to retire. Yeah, she's not ready to be a full time grandma. The, and the... oh, sorry, she, go ahead. She, Ellie didn't want to keep her from doing what she loves which is being a spy yeah. and she's really good at it the, so the, the she only basically th- released her yeah the the only thing i think that i wanted to see there i guess is it would have made that that would have totally made sense to me if we saw ellie like recognizing a sign that she was not happy to be with a baby but out of everybody well, through the whole episode um it seems like she's totally content with this baby being the grandma. That's not the issue, though. Mm-hmm. She is content, but she's not. It's it's not going. It's not. She's not her life. Claire's not her life, and that's what Ellie said. You know, she. Mm-hmm. I'm the one that needs to do that. You're the grandma. Yeah. You know, Ellie's the one that needs because Mary said, you know, I want to give her everything, and be here for her all the time. And Ellie said, well, that's my job, which is true. Right. You know, so. Mary is welcome to come back and visit. I'll, you know, I, I never got that she was like banned or anything or, you know, pushed mm-hmm. away. But basically, 
to me, Ellie was saying, it's okay. Go ahead and go back and to your job and do what you love. We'll be here. You know, just like my mother with her grandkids. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. My mom's not a spy. Don't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> But, well, neither is mine, and she was a great help when my kids were born for the first week. But then after a while, you're like, you you know, you just want everybody to leave anyway. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. with the first one. Yeah. So there might have been a little bit of that too, you know. Mm-hmm. Ellie and Devin wanting to just be the three of them. You know, you get to that point where you just want it to be the three of them for a while. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, guess... though, that it's kind of a – I wonder if it's a gender lens there. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Fans, tell us if you're male or female and what you thought of that scene, what you thought mm-hmm. Ellie's thinking was. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I, I guess, I mean, Ellie's everybody comes at it from a different place. I, I mean, I, I know with me, like, both my parents died about 10 years ago, and they, they weren't a part of my daughter's life. And so, to me, I think I'm probably a lot more sensitive to that than most people. No, I can see that, but at the same time, can you imagine them there 24-7 when she was a baby? How long would you have been able to handle that? Mm. Nah. Yeah. When, when, when you've lost them? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. If you could just imagine, though. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, but I could see where you're coming from. That makes sense. Yeah. But we also found out that Ellie does not know that Chuck is a spy. Mm-hmm. And Mary would not meet her eyes when she was saying that. Yeah. So I really thought that Ellie, or yeah, that Ellie suspected at the very least. Mm-hmm. I mean, but I guess she's been busy. Yeah. Being pregnant and being a doctor and having a baby and taking yeah. care of Devin. So I wonder when she's going to find out and how she's going to find out. I don't know. I wonder why they're taking us down that road again. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like the her her willingness to accept Mary as a spy would mean that she'd be okay with Chuck being a spy. Maybe she's kind of letting go of her fear a little bit. Hmm. I don't know. And maybe now that she has her own daughter to mother, she doesn't. Right. Yeah. So I could see that whole her her feeling changing on that. You know. And I don't know. You know. To me. Chuck is always going to be her her little brother, and no matter what he's doing, no matter what job he's doing, she's you know he, she's going to be mad for a while, but she'll be happy in the same shoes she got mad in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, she just let her find out. Yeah, yeah, I I think I think the only way I could see this working out well is if they go down a road where Ellie needs Chuck to be a spy. I would well, like she to did see that. coup d'état. Yeah. And she still, she still didn't get it. Yeah. It's it's funny because she's so um, smart on so many levels. It's so bizarre that she can't <laughs> piece that together. But well, I, think that's you why, I think that's why it bothers me so much. Mm-hmm. You know, is it just, she isn't a, a stupid woman and she's not on non-observant. Mm-hmm. She, you know, she gets what's going on around her. So for for this to be a blind area with her, just it doesn't fit. It doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And I just, I I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Well. Plain and simple. Yeah. Okay. I guess uh, I guess we got to wait to find out how it's gonna play out. Yeah. To really judge about it, but um, just a couple little fun other things I think are left in the episode. Um. The whole scene where Casey has to seduce that. Uh... <laughs> He's like, I got this. He's done. <laughs> yeah. That was just fun. I mean, that was total fun. Yeah. Uh, and I actually thought he was going to when, when he talked about the gun first. And, and it seemed like if, if there was any woman that Casey could, this would be it. He almost had her. Yeah, almost had her. He almost had her. He was this close. Yeah. But how much uh, did you love Roan back there going, No, no, he failed the first try. Don't let him do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Casey, we all have our strengths. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh uh Roan and polyester. <laughs> I don't 
a rash. Yeah. Uh, this is an episode that I have to just all on its own. I have to own it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I think I have to say that this is my most favorite episode all time. Chuck episode. Oh yeah. Yes. It's just how fun. It it was it it was so much fun and I love this whole season of Chuck because mm-hmm. for so many reasons for you know the, the Chuck and Sarah thing coming together the the Morgan you know um, maturing the, the Casey thing just everything about this season has been really wonderful to me but this episode it's just my cup of tea mm-hmm. that that humor that that kind of you know, like Mel said in the beginning of the program, or what, or what we were talking about, the um, the throwbacks to the old TV. Yeah. That made us laugh all the time. Yeah. And you know, it looks that, like that you put on when you need a good laugh. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like next week is going to be a lot of fun too. Mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, well, there's there's one little angsty thing that fans seem to want to comment on mm-hmm. frequently. And we've actually had a couple of emails come in wanting us to ask the production team why Sarah was not wearing her ring. She wore it in Castle, but she wasn't wearing it in pretty much every other scene. And I don't know, and I really don't care. (laughs) The whole episode, they were talking about getting married and their wedding plans. So, I I don't know. The ring, I, I must just not be all that attached to jewelry. Yeah, Bracelet, well, ring, I don't care. And yeah. I mean, I, I would, th- I would think that in any spy mission that she would take off recognizable jewelry like that. Yeah, she's not going to wear her engagement ring there, and she wasn't wearing it in bed, which didn't strike me as odd because I don't wear rings or in, you know any jewelry to bed. Although Liz and I were talking about it earlier, and she does wear hers. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I don't take mine off. Yeah, that's a personal preference thing, I guess, but. In the belly dancing scene, you know, she had those bells on her fingers. I don't know that she could have worn a ring. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't really think I want to waste the question on that. But <laughs> if we get the opportunity. Yeah, I think it. I mean, when she did wear it, they had a, they made sure to have a, a shot focusing on it. Right. Um. I don't. Yeah, it doesn't bug me. No, I doesn't bother me at all yeah I, but i do want to say that i i really loved the belly dancing mm-hmm. i think you that did. Yvonne did she was so beautiful you know she was so graceful her movements were so gorgeous uh she was stunning in that scene i was I impressed she could do it i mean not everybody can <laughs> yeah it, it's tough it's not easy to do that um, mm-hmm. i did try many years ago <laughs> we won't go there <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole nother set of muscles yes yeah. to do that and to be so graceful and elegant with it yeah is, yeah props to Yvonne that was really you know it's it's easy to give her kudos when she has these big fight scenes like in phase three but I don't know it seems to me like the belly dancing would take just as much skill mm-hmm. uh, yeah absolutely mm-hmm. I'd love to know if she's taken lessons or if there was just somebody called in specially for that episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd love to know. That's a question that I want to know. Okay. Yeah. We'll ask about that <laughs> and the, the ring. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think uh, that's probably a good place to uh, end this discussion of the episode. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. All, all in all, very, very strong episode of Chuck. And it does look like next week is going to be uh, equally strong. So I hope... Um, I hope everybody watches live. Yeah. But uh, I guess it's time to thank our sponsors. And now we want to thank our sponsors, ielabs.com, makers of award-winning Action Blue AVCHD conversion software, which offers full HD videos on regular DVD discs. It even works with HD clips with, from the newest iPhone 4. You can get your free trial of the software at ielabs.com. We also want to thank moviemorons.com for supporting Check versus the podcast. Movie Morons is a podcast all about film, so if you are inclined to find out what movies you should be watching this fall, check out MovieMorons.com. And SyrianJunkies.de. We want to thank them for supporting us as well. 
Hello, this is Christina Caramel from Serien Junkies TV. Are you addicted to TV shows? Be our guests and learn the latest news and reflections on what's going on in the world of TV series. Well, our show is in German, but maybe you want to drop in anyway? Then visit www.serienjunkies.de and watch out for our video podcast. See you. We're going to start to wrap things up, but I uh, did want to mention that, of course, next week is Valentine's Day, and it actually fits quite well with the uh, with this episode of Chuck that aired this week. Um, but uh, next week will be a slightly shorter podcast, and it will be out on Friday, because not only is it Valentine's Day, but it's also uh, my wife and my 10th wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Aww. Yep. I can't believe 10 years pretty pretty cool and actually because of that uh there will also not be a tv writer podcast that week um so if you're looking for that it's not there <laughs> but uh we will be back next week and the following week and every week that chuck is on we will be on yeah. Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> And remember, if you have any questions or comments to share, please email those to us at mail at chuckpodcast.com. And be sure to join us at chucktv.net on Monday, February 14th for the live chat during the next episode. And we will be there. Mm -hmm. And I will be there in the spoiler section this time. But if you don't want to be, you don't have to be. Um, so you can turn the podcast off now if uh, if that's what you want. But do remember to watch Chuck live Monday night at 8 o'clock. Let's get those ratings up. Yeah. but You're uh, not going to want to miss this one. Yeah, you don't want to miss this one. Karina's back. We've got Lou Diamond Phillips. Um, Yay! We've got, uh, what, what is that team of, of Sarah's? What's it called again? The Cat Squad. The Cat Squad. You don't want to miss the Cat Squad. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, I guess we'll we'll see you virtually then. And uh, have a great week if you don't want to watch the spoilers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And we're back. Now, what have you got for us? Well, I have some more information about the Cat Squad. Mm -hmm. This is episode 415, Chuck versus the Cat Squad, which airs Monday, February 14th. Chuck invites trouble when he reunites Sarah with her old spy team. Lou Diamond Phillips, Minnie Anton, and McKenna Melvin guest star. Chuck surprises Sarah with her old spy team, the Cat Squad, leading to a mission in Rio. Mm. Ah, as the Cat Squad works to settle a score with Augusto Gaez, guest star Lou Diamond Phillips, old secrets and grudges come to light. Back at the Bymore, Morgan bends off the advances of Karina, a former flame and key member of the Cat Squad. Adam Baldwin, Sarah Lancaster, and Benita Frigerici also star. And we've got some photos from this episode posted at checktv.net. There's a really cool one where Sarah and two other members of the Cat Squad are looking quite um, Charlie's Angels-ish. <laughs> They're in their poses. So it looks exciting. I cannot wait for this. Yeah. And then Karina, up to her old tricks. Mm -hmm. And she meets I... Alex. We saw that in the preview. Yeah. She does Alex. Always a spicy episode when Karina's back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Zach Tewitt's reporting that Volkoff's lawyer will be played by Ray Weiss. I'm really excited about that because you probably remember him playing Satan on the CW series Reaper. Um, I mean, who better to play Volkoff's lawyer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Satan himself. Yeah. Wise is introduced in episode 415, Chuck versus the Masquerade. This is also when we will see Lauren Cohen and Robin Givens, as reported by us earlier at ChuckTV.net. I don't know about you all, but this pairing, Wise and Dalton, is going to be dynamic, and I can't wait. I'm mm -hmm. so totally stoked about that. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. That's been really cool casting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what show does guest casting better than Chuck? I don't know. You know, there are times when they, they announce somebody that they've cast in a guest role, and you're like, stop, of course. Yeah. Why did I think of that? Yeah. They need to be on Chuck. Yeah, but Ray Wise, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Why hasn't he been on Chuck already? Yeah. Because they were waiting for this moment. Exactly. <laughs> And the next one, I'm very, very excited about Lauren Cohen, last seen on The Vampire Diaries as Vampire Rose. I thought she did just a tremendous, tremendous job uh, in The Vampire Diaries. 
Um, she's going to be in a five episode arc on Chuck as Vivian, an Oxford scholar with a father who turns out to be a criminal mastermind. Much has been speculated about this character, especially with the tan with tantalizing clues dropping, like she shares more in common with Chuck than he expected. Is she Volkoff's daughter, um, Chuck's half sister? In an interview with EW, Lauren shed some light on her role. The character's fun. She's actually been uh, such a nice departure from the dark ages. She jokes, <laughs> "She's not quite bumbling. She's a well educated, well educated person with no purpose." who just kind of gets unwittingly wrenched into this CIA world. This girl is kind of like, I don't know what to do with my life. And then the CIA arrives and they're like, you have all these skills. Come with us. We don't actually know what her role is going to be. The CIA comes to protect her and then events turn. Mm -hmm. Cohen says those skills involve weaponry, languages, karate, and that Vivian is also an equestrian. Fortunately, Cohen is a quick learner. It was really funny because in the breakdown, it said, must be an experienced horse rider. And I went for the audition and I booked the job and I called them and I said, they do know that I couldn't just jump on a horse and like run, right? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, 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 it's fine. In the end, they don't want any of their actors doing really dangerous stuff anyway. They teach you as much as they can. And then they have amazing pros do the other stuff. But from the paragraph above, it sounds like Vivian becomes a CIA asset, which certainly gives her something in, in common with Chuck. It also means her father probably won't be happy when he finds out she's working for the CIA. Earlier in the article, she's identified as Vivian MacArthur, which doesn't completely rule out Volkov as her father, but does keep us guessing. And yes, we know she's listed as Vivian Volkov on IMDb, but uh, as we mentioned last week, anybody can submit inf information there without verifying it. So for right now, we're not calling that definitive. But what we do know, five episodes and with all of those skills involved, uh, sounds like there's going to be a lot of action with her, and it'll be a lot of fun. I'm so looking forward to having her on check. Yeah. Oh, I, I am really too. like her Diaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet, yet another great guest cast here. Yeah, and yep. and particularly if she's in for a five episode arc, she yeah. she's, I mean, she can play such a layered character. Mm -hmm. Um. So I I think that's a, a really really smart choice. Yeah, I think she was a good choice for this. And if she's starting out kind of bumbling, I think that's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. We've never really seen a female Chuck, have we? Not you know, bumbling kind of, like that, no. No, you know, mm -hmm. we've, we've seen Morgan kind of become Chuck 2.0. And mm -hmm. Manoush had his own, you know, little portable intersect and was, didn't have the greatest social skills. Yeah. But... This will be the first time we've seen a woman. Yeah, it'd be nice to it might, nice to see like a female manouche or a you know mm -hmm. to go into those areas, especially yeah. now that that Chuck is so secure with Sarah. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it'd yeah. be kind of fun. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I can't wait. But first, the Cat Squad. Yeah, first the Cat Squad. <laughs> and then um, we're back to mythology. Yeah. So I guess uh, on that note. We will reconvene when we've got Cat Squad to talk about. That's right. Yeah. So uh, we want to thank everybody for watching. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day and a wonderful time watching Chuck. And we'll see you virtually next week. Bye, Texters. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>